Hello there. This is the next move by the eco zealots, and you will not like it. The next target for the eco zealots is a concept called Energy Demand Reduction, or EDR. Oh, yes, the plan is not to give us lots of cheap energy from renewable sources. The aim is to get you to reduce your energy consumption. Or more specifically, to get those people who live in the Northern Hemisphere to use a lot less energy so that those in the Southern Hemisphere can use more. No wonder there's little evidence of a real electricity grid expansion for electric cars across the UK, for example. And it's all about something called equitable demand. Sounds very socialist, doesn't it? Wonder if this will affect the top 1% who travel the planet at will from plush venue to plush venue, bossing us on how to stay in low traffic neighbourhoods and eat bugs to save the planet. Anyway, we also learn that it is the Northern Hemisphere luxury demand for energy that is the root cause of all the global energy problems going forwards. And the idea is to limit the luxury energy demand of the top 20% so that the basic needs of the 20% of those who use the least energy can be met. But I wonder how many ordinary people in the Northern Hemisphere would fall into the global 20% of top energy users. And this reduction at the top, says the claim, will reduce pollution by nearly 10%. With a report from the University of Leeds, led by Professor Milena Fuchs and published in Nature Energy, saying... There is now wide recognition that energy demand reduction in the global north will be required to meet climate targets as supply-side measures that decarbonise energy use cannot be solely relied upon. A wide recognition. Wonder if it'll end up in any election party political manifesto. Effectively, those who emit the most usually the wealthiest who live in the Northern Hemisphere, must now be forced to reduce their energy consumption to allow the poorest, usually in the Southern Hemisphere, to use the energy they need. This tells me simply that by 2050 there will not be enough renewable energy out there to allow everyone to use as much energy as they need or want as long as they can pay for it. No, it sounds like there will be far less energy that will have to be equitably allotted. So that old concept has to go to be replaced with new concepts, like consumption corridors, the safe and space of humanity, and the good life within planetary boundaries. With the report in Nature Energy saying... These approaches advocate reducing global energy use and associated emissions and material use to a level compatible with planetary boundaries while ensuring that everyone's human needs are met. Reducing global energy use. And did you catch that reducing the use of materials bit? You can use less energy and have less stuff. And the idea behind that, equitable EDR would therefore target high energy users to bring energy use and associated emissions within planetary limits and ensure that everyone's basic energy needs are met. So it's not just about making energy clean. It's also about getting us to use a lot less of it overall while transferring a chunk from the rich to the poor on a global scale with the wealthier using less, but picking up the tab, no doubt. And with estimates from the Stockholm Environment Institute and Oxfam saying that the top 1% emit twice as much carbon dioxide as the bottom 50% do, then you get the picture. But the top 1% also have all the money and or all the power.
So how do you stop them just carrying on regardless? How will this equity be achieved? Well, that would be the job of the carbon credit scores. Everyone gets a carbon allowance and it doesn't matter how rich you are, you can't buy another transatlantic flight if you've used up your allowance. In fact, when you think about it, a carbon credit allowance system would be a great leveller because it wouldn't matter how rich you were, you'd still not be able to buy loads of cars and big houses. But part of it is a big downward leveller because it would not matter how hard you worked either. You'd still not get that extra holiday, even if you had oodles of dosh in the bank, because it's the carbon credits that matter, not the money. Now, there has been talk of the rich being able to buy carbon credits from the poor, so the poor get the money and the rich get the carbon credits. But who would sell carbon credits for money when you need carbon credits to spend with the money in the first place. Because money without carbon credits to go with it would be virtually worthless. And further, having such a system of the rich being able to enhance their lives at the expense of the poor would not be equitable in the eyes of the socialists setting this system up. So all those big fat cat bankers out there would probably end up sat on piles of worthless cash. And further, inheriting a huge stately pile could end up costing a lot of carbon credits too. Before you get in the Bentley. And all those people out there trying to make a packet from net zero could find they've painted themselves neatly into a 15 minute neighbourhood city with the proletariat even though they have millions in the bank. The Great Reset could end up resetting them all. Either that, or the top 1% will maintain their lifestyles while the rest of us level down to allow it. After all, the top 1% would argue, someone's got to be in charge and travel the world to make sure the other 99% are compliant with saving the planet. But that's not equitable. But I don't think the top 1% care much about equity, do you? Anyway, the report goes on to say that our results demonstrate that targeting high-level energy consumers can achieve considerable emissions reductions in Europe. And that results show that equitable EDR strategies in Europe would be defensible from a social justice perspective. All the right buzzwords, then. Now, some will say this is only about the top 20% users of energy and the bottom 20% users. But even if the gap narrows, there will always be a top 20% and a bottom 20% until, in the end, everyone gets the same energy allowance. The same worldwide carbon allowance for each human. A set carbon allowance that no amount of wealth can change. A system where you can buy up to the limit of your money or your carbon credits, whichever is the lower. Something that will be totally unacceptable to the top 1% like Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates. No, they think they are the only ones to be trusted, so they will want to set up some sort of nepotistic arrangement within the Great Reset to keep their privileges in the family for generations to come. The new feudalism, twas ever thus.